Hi everyone, welcome back. This is going to be my first real update video on what it's like installing a solar home battery, the Pure Drive Energy battery specifically. It's a 5 kilowatt hour battery that I've had installed. This is a test device that I'm doing a test in conjunction with Power Different, the local solar and uh, battery installer here in Norfolk. As you can see from this rather obvious space that I left with my installation, I've been planning on having a home storage battery for quite some time. But what I'm going to find interesting with this test is what's the reality like from what I expected from a battery versus what I actually get delivered. And of course, the teething problems that we're going to go through. And that's what this video is really about, some of the teething problems. Installation wise, it took the Power Different team, there was two of them, it took them about half a day to install. I would guess because this was the first time they've installed this drive and it was more of a test rather than a pure customer install, probably two to three hours is what you could expect this to be installed in. Inside the battery case there's uh, pretty standard stuff to be honest. So you've got this cabinetry which says pure drive, but inside the battery looks quite generic, which I can't actually see which manufacturer of battery cells it is because that's not really openable. But then you've got a Victron inverter as well, and that's pretty standard stuff. So Pure Drive are basically packaging some industry standard things. The Victron inverter is a multi plus 48 3035. So the 48 for a 48 volt battery, the 3000 for 3000 volt amp power capability, and 35 for 35 amps of charging capability. That's my guess anyway as to what all the numbers really mean. One of the things I'm noticing straight away is, as with electric cars, some of the electric terminology is a bit unnecessary. What we're really interested in is how much power can we consume into the battery and how much can we discharge out of the battery, and when. But what they choose to tell us is volts, volt amps, amps, kilowatts. It's, it's actually really hard to start with to find out how many kilowatt hours are in this battery, a term that I'm used to you know, units of electricity, but no, they want to give it to us in technical terms. Bit of a shame, really. Okay, I sort of uh, anticipated this, but the first observation is to do with my hot water heating. I knew my priorities would change with the solar battery, that the battery would get charged first, then my hot water would get heated, then my car would get charged. I knew that was going to be the case, but for the first two days of having the battery installed, I didn't really get any hot water. I've missed out on heating hot water completely. There hasn't been enough energy to do it. Yes, it's been dull days, but what energy there would have been would have gone towards hot water. Instead, it went into the battery. What I've had to do so far is actually boost the hot water using the My Energy Eddy device that I have. That's the solar diverter that I use. But of course, that's a 3 kilowatt immersion heater, and the power out of this battery is only about 2.2, 2.3 kilowatts. So depending on when I do it, I'm actually drawing from the grid, which I didn't used to do when I was just using the My Energy Eddy device. So I've noticed a difference here that it's, it's not as easy to get the hot water hot unless there's enough sunshine, unless there's enough to charge the battery and heat the hot water itself. Otherwise the boost isn't really going to be as ideal as just charging from solar. So ideally, I need either a more powerful battery or more sunshine. The other thing I'm noticing hot water wise is the monitoring via the eddy device. It's only uh, monitoring how much solar I put into the hot water. So energy coming from the battery, it's not counting as green energy, so it's not counting it. I can't see how many kilowatt hours are going into my hot water at the moment. Bit of a pain. The first real issue that I've had is the battery discharging itself all the way down to zero, even though it's got a depth of discharge setting set to 20%. And when it goes below the 20%, I, this time it went down to zero, it then recharges back to 20% from grid energy, which I don't want it to do, obviously. This My Energy chart shows uh, what happened here. In the green on the left hand side of the chart at the bottom, that's me turning on a boost of the eddy device to heat the hot water. The battery runs out down to zero, so then grid energy, red, comes in next, charging it back up to the 20%. This chart from the battery's own monitoring system shows what's going on from a state of charge point of view. The blue line is showing that we started out at 66%. I turned on the hot water and then it drained all the way down to zero, but it should have stopped at 20% ideally. I'm waiting on a support call from Pure Drive to try and understand why it is doing this. It might be that it's calibrating the battery for the first few charges. 
I don't actually feel that I'm getting to see the real benefits of having a storage battery at the moment in that the amount of grid use I'm seeing is looking almost more with the battery than I used to have without the battery. And that's because we've got this grid charging going on, which hopefully we can avoid at some point. But also there's a level of grid use continuously that I didn't really expect to see. And that level of grid use is more than my overnight house load. So with my house load, I can get the uh, grid use down to about 30 watts, 30 to 40 watts. But we're definitely seeing more than that with the battery, even though it's supposed to be taking that night load. And that's a bit of a surprise to me that I was expecting the battery to cover the night load. But because mine is so low anyway, it doesn't look like it's going to, not as well as I thought it would. Um, with some tuning and with changing a parameter which was actually set incorrectly on the box we've got it down to as low as 5 but more averaging around 17 to 30 watts as a continuous load overnight but that's still that's still gonna be like half a kilowatt hour that it's going to consume from the grid don't get me wrong of course I know this is early days and I know I'm gonna see the battery performing a lot better once everything's uh, working correctly and uh, I have enjoyed watching the car charge um, just from the battery on its own like here in this image or I have enjoyed boosting the hot water at three kilowatts and heating the hot water quickly and seeing that from partly solar and partly battery so I can definitely see the benefit of the battery I'm enjoying having it it's just not as perfect as you might think from day one. This is probably a good time also to try and explain the CT clip issue that I have. In a previous video, I've explained the technical side of why we've got a problem with the clips. But here, visually, I can actually show you what's wrong on the My Energy displays. My Energy is behaving correctly, the software is right, it's the clips that are wrong. So, no fault of My Energy, just want to make that clear. In this image, what we're seeing is we're charging the battery at 200 watts from solar. That's just the base load. There's nothing going on. There's hardly any energy being used by the house. There's no appliances on, so the battery is charging at a really low level. So that all looks good. So you think. But if I turn the Zappy on into eco mode, so it's going to charge at 1.4 kilowatts by default, then that's going to draw more from the battery. And what we're seeing here is 1.2 kilowatts coming from the battery going to the car. That's normal. But remember, we were charging from 200 watts solar. So there's 200 watts solar around somewhere. So the 1.2 from the battery plus the 200 watts from the solar, that's what makes up the 1.4 going to the car. Solar generation isn't really 1.5 kilowatts. It's 1.5 kilowatts less the 1.2 from the battery. That battery value is in there as well. And then also the house consumption of 1.3, that's not right either. That's a derived number, which isn't correct. So I'm having a bit of fun with numbers, really, that looking at a chart like this, it takes a little looking at to actually work out what's really going on there. The values that I know are correct are the values for the hot water via the eddy and the CT clip on the battery. So I know 1.5 from the battery is accurate and I know 3.2 into hot water is accurate as well. And the difference between the two is 1.7. So that's actually what's coming from solar. Give or take the 0.1 that may or may not be coming from the grid. So it'll definitely be better when we get the CT clip issue sorted. Interface wise, uh, my first impressions are that it's a little bit clunky and it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the Solar Edge app, but everything you need is there. There's plenty of options, plenty of detail, plenty of technical stuff to keep many people happy. Um, these sort of pale colours, uh, yeah, they're not as easy to read, that's a bit of a shame, but the variation and graduation that you can use are actually quite good. I haven't played with all the options yet, but time charging, that's definitely there and that looks useful, including the ability to stop at a particular state of charge. The ability to limit charging power, that might be useful first thing in the morning so that uh, we can charge the battery at a trickle of two or 300 watts, but still put some power out to the hot water. As always, I'll probably want more than it can provide. Why isn't there a schedule on limiting charge power? And grid set point, that was set to 50, and that was what was causing a higher base load. So now we've set it to zero, we're getting much better results overnight. 
Okay, I'll end the video on a high note. Uh, we've just finished charging the battery to 100%. It's two o'clock in the afternoon now. The hot water is now charging and the sun's come out and we've got plenty of energy. So not too bad a day. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope this is interesting. I hope it's useful to you if you're considering an electric battery. But please remember, this isn't a review of the battery. This is just more a review of the experience of first installing the battery. More details to come when I know more about exactly how the battery works and how it's working for me. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon. Bye bye.